How's it going everybody? Steven Sanchez here from Marigold Tattoo in Anaheim, California. Today we're going to go over how to draw Japanese snakes. One of my favorite subjects to do, one of my favorite subjects to tattoo as well. I've been drawing Japanese snakes for about three to four years. By no means I am no master, no aficionado. I've just grown to love them and how they look and how they flow on the body. And we're going to go over some of my favorite things uh, is how I draw them and put them together and just what I think what makes a really nice Japanese snake tattoo and a drawing in general. So we're just going to go through all my tips and tricks. We're going to use some tracing paper. Uh, that's what I like to draw on sometimes. Sometimes I use my iPad or just my sketchbook depending on my mood. And today we're also going to use some uh, classic Sharpie markers, some uh, yellow to start off with, some uh, red to refine and then green to make my final design there. So it should be pretty good, and I hope you guys enjoy it. But first, we gotta have some coffee. We can't draw without some coffee. It's pretty good. Also, we're gonna need some music. All right, let's get started. Okay, I'm getting my yellow marker here. I'm getting ready to start my process of getting the snake started. Before I actually really put ink to paper, I kind of run my pen making shapes with my hand, trying to figure out how I want the snake to be and the flow and the composition. I try to just keep my hand really natural before I actually start putting ink to paper. Now when I make a snake, I always start with the head, and then I kind of go from there. I, I feel the head is a great place to start for a snake. It, it gives you the direction of where things going to go. Now you can draw the head facing up, you can draw the head facing down, you can keep it profile, but it, it does change the attitude of the snake if you have it up or down. So. It's, it's interesting what you can do. All I'm really doing here is trying to figure out the flow and just keep staying loose with my hand here, making a lot of like eight figures. I'm, I'm imagining the snake climbing up a rock or a tree. not making the thing too perfect, just nice and loose. Really trying to find the shape of this guy and where I want him to go. And so now I'm working on the head here. Usually for the top of the head and the bottom of the jaw, I do two oval shapes. I think it's the easiest shapes to use to create the top head and the mouth there. And once again, they're very loose. Or nothing set in stone. The first line I drew for the snake's body is initially the spine of the snake and now I'm going to draw this second line here and it's going to be where his belly scales go now when you're drawing this these the second line of the snake here his, his belly line here you want to make sure that you keep the distance from the belly and the spine as proportional as possible. You don't want to have it skinny on top and thick in the middle and skinny on top of again. You definitely want to try to keep it consistent. The same width all the way through until you get to the end of the tail because the end of a tail of a snake is small and skinny. 
but it's more important to just to keep it loose and keep it natural. I find if I try to overthink things when I'm drawing, it, I always run into a wall or I get a headache and I, I don't want to finish it. So if I just build from shapes and just loosely kind of work things out, it's always a, a, a better drawing for me. Now this is my first draft here. I'm, this is not my final sketch. I work in many, many layers, and I think you guys should too. It really helps you out. Once again, you want to keep everything really proportional. So if the snake's got a medium-sized head, you definitely want to draw a medium-sized body. You don't want to draw this extra large snake head and have this uh, extra small skinny body. It's, it's going to look, it, it won't be appeasing to the eye. It won't look natural. And that's the, the hardest part of, of drawing here is keeping things natural. So you always want to reference, look at real snakes, look at other snake drawings, snake paintings, even snake tattoos, whatever you're, you're inspired by and for whatever drawing you're going to do. So I'm, I'm also keeping in mind the composition of where the curves are going to go, how it's laying out. I'm always just sketching. I'm not really putting setting in anything in stone. I chose to draw in Sharpie markers so you guys can see it on the camera a little better. Sometimes I feel if I draw in pencil, it doesn't really pick up as well. So let me know if you guys like that in the comments below there. There's no right or wrong utensils to draw with, whatever you feel comfortable with. If you like drawing with crayons, and so be it. Right here, I'm running my pen through my first draft. And I feel when I run my pen through my first draft here, and I really don't get caught up I feel like it's a, it's a good start to a drawing here. It feels nice and natural. I don't have to stop and turn my hand. It feels really good just running it through. I think that's key when you're drawing a snake or a dragon or a koi or other designs that are have this similar shape. You know, the cool thing about illustrating or drawing, especially in tattoo designs, is that you can really over accentuate all the characteristics of something. Now, I'll, you keep in mind it has to be in proportion to what you're drawing. So, once again, I don't want to have this super tiny, skinny tongue. I don't want to have this extra large tongue, but just right, just to, to fit the snake that I'm drawing. So, you can you know, shoot that tongue way out there and have it look really nice still. Okay, I've got my red Sharpie here. I'm pretty much just refining my first draft. Everything's still really loose. I'm just keeping in mind that I have to keep my back of the spine here and the front of his belly in proportion. So I'm trying to make things as even as possible. It's still really sketchy, really loose. Really just trying to just make it natural as possible. If you notice, I'm holding my pen. I'm not really gripping it super tight. I'm, I'm keeping it loose in my hand. I think it's really key when you're sketching and drawing. I only really grip the pen or pencil really tight when I'm finishing a drawing, a final, final, final line drawing. But if I'm doing stuff like this, I, I, it's, I try to keep it really loose. Once again, I'm just making sure that the spine and belly match up everywhere. So it's getting down to the tail here and I gotta make sure that I match the back of the spine. 
it's going to start thinning out, getting a little skinnier because it's the end of the snake. So now I'm drawing the mouth here. And the bottom of the jaw. So I try to keep the bottom of the jaw and the top of the mouth in relations to each other. I don't try to make the top of the mouth protrude further than the bottom of the jaw. Yes, they do overlap a little bit, but I don't want to, to make it so over-exaggerated where it doesn't make any sense. So I try to keep them relatively close to each other. Once again, if you get stuck and you're not too sure how to draw something, always use a reference. Go online, look at some books, look at some other designs. They're always going to help you out. Okay, we're starting the eye here, and now we're starting some of the top of the snake. It almost looks like plates. I call them plates at the top of the head there. Essentially, they're pretty much the scales of the top of the snake there. So I try to draw the eye right in the middle of the snake's face. I think it's really key to keep the eye closer to the nose than it is to keep it further away back towards the jaw. I've noticed that in a lot of snake, uh, real snake drawings or snake pictures that the eye is just right in the sweet spot, you know, not too close to the nose, not butting up right against the beginning of his face, and not super far, far back, just right in the middle. You can make your eye round, you can make it oval, that would be a stylistic choice. So those little things, looking at reference, will help you keep your drawing close to a natural looking snake. So I, I'm starting the fangs here. Now the top two fangs, I try to keep them, I start them at the end of the nose there, the end of the nose line and the beginning of the nose. So right in that little sweet spot right there. I don't put his, you know, two major fangs under his eye. You know, I, right in the front, you want them to pop out really nice. And you can make those super long or super short. I've seen a lot of guys do it different ways. I kind of like a happy medium. I don't like making them super, super long or super, super short. So this is my second draft here. There's nothing's set in stone. I'm really still trying to figure out how I want things to look. And I'm, I know in the back of my mind that this is just a second draft. Now, if you don't have tracing paper like this, you can always just use regular paper and just get some pencils or some colored pencils and just start off really light. Okay, now I'm starting his belly line here. You wanna keep this line symmetrical with the other lines here. So you wanna keep it in tune with his spine and the front of his belly there. So this third line that I'm drawing here is gonna pretty much a guideline for my belly scales are going to stop. So the front of his body is where the, they're going to start and this line I'm drawing here is gonna be where they end. Once again, everything's still really loose, but I'm trying to keep this line in proportion with the other lines here. 
I think these are really important. This is what really helps you make your snakes just look a little more natural. It's still really sketchy. A lot of lumps, a lot of bumps, and that's quite all right. I, I'm okay with that. I, I want this to be like that. I don't want this to be final. I, I want to get all the kinks out right here. Okay, so now I'm starting the belly scales here. Usually when I do this, I do like a scooping motion. It's like it's a nice happy medium between a flat belly and a round belly. Some guys do a straight line that looks really flat and some guys will do more of a bubbly stomach. I kind of like a little in between. Now it's important to try to keep the distance between each belly scale as close as possible. And the same goes for the mouth here. I'm going to start doing his mouth scales here. I try to keep them proportionate to each other. The same width the best I can. And once again, if you guys get stuck, look up some reference. There's nothing wrong with that. I think when I first started drawing stuff, I didn't use that much reference. When I was a young artist, I just thought I could draw from the top of my head, and man, I got stuck so many times, I'd get frustrated and throw it away, and oh man, I was only hurting myself. I was very fortunate to work with some uh, talented tattooers who would tell me reference, or where's your reference, where's your reference at? How come you don't have reference? Why aren't you doing this? And it really helped out, I'm super fortunate for those guys. Okay, so now I got my black pin here. I know I said in the beginning of the video I was going to use a green, but I felt it was a little too thick, so I wanted you guys, I want this line to be a little more refined here. So this is my third draft here. Now, I'm still making this loose. I'm not, I'm, uh, it's a little more precision in my hand. My hand's a little more tight on my, my marker there, but I still know in the back of my head this is just my third draft and all I'm really doing is following the lines I've made. And it's really okay if they're still lumpy and bumpy. I'm just cleaning everything up, making everything a little nicer on this one because I know this is gonna be refined even more. So this is a second sheet of tracing paper on top of my yellow and red drafts there. I just taped it right over. Usually when I'm drawing a snake here, I always start with the back of the spine. I've always done it that way. I, I'm not too sure why, but I feel like if I get the back of the spine done first, everything kind of follows suit. If I try to start in the middle, it doesn't work as well. So I'm just going in here and refining the line where his belly ends up to his belly scales here.
like I said, I try to do the spine and then his belly line just like that. So I try to make them in proportion to with each other. I feel if I try to do his spine and then the actual belly skills and then try to draw his belly line there, it, it always comes out a little funky. So here I'm going over the belly skills, making that same scoop motion to it. Trying to keep them as proportionate as possible, the same width all the way through. Obviously when you get down to the tail, they tailor and get a little tighter, but for the most part I try to keep them as close to each other as possible, the same distance in between each other. It took me a long time to figure out how to draw snakes the way I like them. It was a lot of practice. A lot of just doing it over and over again. Once again, I know that this is just my third draft and I'll be revising this later after this. So this is just my third, third sketch here. Nothing is perfect, it's still loose. It's, it's just a little more refined. I'm starting to see the real shape of my snake tick out. Same thing for the mouth here. I do those mouth scales, keep them into proportion to each other and keep them the, the same distance between each other. Now for the eye here, I think it's a good tip. When I make that brow coming over the eye, I really make it a, like low profile. And the same thing with the head, I keep it really low profile. I think it really gives this, this snake some aggressiveness. If I try to make the head too round or, um, you know, some other shapes, it might look a little goofy. So I try to keep it really low pro, low profile. Now for the tongue, I usually draw about this distance coming out. And I, I always try to do the ends of the tongue going down or up. I try to make them the same. I don't do the ends of them, once flicking up, once flicking down. I try to flick them the same direction. And once again, it just makes it look the look the snake a little more natural. Okay, so now we're on, we're gonna start the pattern of the snake here. So this is the sheet I had over my yellow and red drafts here. So this is my, just my black marker draft here. So there's lots of patterns you can do for a snake. You can do scales, you can do dots, there, there's quite a few ways to do this. I enjoy doing scales and I enjoy doing this pattern I'm doing here. For this video I chose to do the more classic Japanese uh, dots and rings for the pattern. Almost like a python pattern on, on the, the design here. So in this motion I'm going down, or up and down, up and down, trying to keep those equal distance between each of the parts that go up and down. And I'm keeping the notion in my head that it's loose, you know, this is just my third draft, it's, this is not final. And it's okay to, to be like that. You can even see in my drawing here, it's, you know, some lines are sketchy, lumpy and bumpy, and that's quite all right. Okay, now I'm gonna make the rings on the snake. So this is why I try to keep the distance of the pattern the same, because I know I wanna put these rings in between them. So that if I try to keep them as equal as possible, or proportionate as possible, the 
aesthetic of the snake is going to look overall better because it's going to have a natural look to it. Your eye won't be confused. You'll just flow really nice with the snake. Now I'm going to add these dots here on the snake. I think this is really cool when you see tattoos or drawings or paintings of Japanese snakes with these dots. I always thought it was so eye-catching. Now when I do these dots, I don't do them sporadically. I do have a little method, and my method is just to kind of go back and forth. I always pictured a, a dice, like with the number five, like the five dots on it. I picture that in my head, and I try to mimic that on the snake's back here. So in, on the dice, there's one dot in the middle, and then there's two on each side. And I, I try to keep that back and forth motion. I think that is a great pattern to keep in your head to, uh, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's like a, a pattern inside of a pattern. It, it never ends. Doing these snakes, it's lots of repetition and just a lot of practice, yeah. So I continue this all the way through the snake. Now some guys will put the dots on the back here and then put more dots where the rings are at. Now that's totally up to you. Whatever you, whatever you feel like you want to do. Once again, if you get stuck and you're not too sure, pull out some reference. It's always good to have reference. I had a reference in front of me when I was doing this video here. And it's good to have a couple references in front of you. Have a, a picture of an actual snake and a picture of a, a tattoo design or a sketch. It's only going to help you. Alright, so we just got done drawing the snake here. I'm pretty happy with the general layout and the pattern and the belly and the head. It was pretty hard to draw this thing just right in front of me. I'm a habitual paper turner and windmill drawer. I like to move my stuff everywhere I go as I draw. So it was quite challenging to draw just in one spot. It's a lot of trial and error, just doing it over and over again. Just doing a lot of bad ones before you do any remotely good ones. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're trying and pushing yourself and just, you know, in general, having fun. I love drawing on my spare time, you know, in between tattoos when I'm at home. Um, whenever I can, I, I really enjoy drawing. It's only going to benefit me and my career and just my clients as a general is to keep my skills sharp. Um, so the more you practice, the better you get. There is no perfect. You just kind of keep going and tailoring the snakes and to what you just uh, enjoy as a tattoo and enjoy as a drawing overall. The composition here is, you know, it's overall, it's okay. It's not the greatest composition. I think maybe that I can move the head back here a little more and have a nice, uh, you know, overall composition for the drawing here. But just to show my processes of how I do this, I think overall it's a, a nice drawing so that you guys can see how I get it done. Usually from this point, I would uh, take a photo of it or scan it and then put it in my iPad and really refine it for a nice line drawing for a tattoo. It's really rare that I use this actual design and then tattoo it on somebody. I, you know, obviously there's a lot of lumps and bumps. You know, lines are mis you know not connected. There's some sketchy lines here, but this is what I would call a good third rough draft, a good third skeleton. <clears throat> I would take it in my iPad and, like I said, go over it and redo everything, make it really slick, really clean just as, as best as I possibly can get it, you know, rearrange the composition if I need to, also depending on what the client would like, where it's gonna be, how big it's gonna be. Um, but other than that, this is generally how I design all my snakes. You know, I'd go in there and make the eye a little meaner. This guy looks a little soft here. 
So stuff like that, it just, it all depends on, you know, what I'm gonna do, but typically that's the next move from this. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Maybe you guys learned something, picked up some cool tips and tricks, and uh, you know, we'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.